interested in getting into the front office side of things. And uh, we sort of, sort of talked over the last year or so, and you know, this summer even more so, we uh, kind of found a, found a little role for me, and um, it's, it's probably the appropriate amount of workload I'm looking for right now, and just a good thing to get my feet wet and start learning some stuff. I came here the other day, and not much has changed since when I got drafted. You know, you come up the stairs, and, and all the stuff's the same, except for, um, you know, there's, there's three things over there that, <laughs> Uh, are new and uh, you know it just seems like a lifetime ago that I was here but you know, you know I was a warrior and it's kind of fun to be back and uh, it's I've always rooted for him it's been it's been fun to follow the last uh, you know five six years and um, I'm excited to to be a part of it now. I mean, it's the same facility like you mentioned but how much different does the organization feel because I mean it's completely different like it, it, it really is you know um, when I was here, I, I felt pretty confident that we, we, we had a strength in two areas. Uh, our two best things were our equipment guy and our PR guy. And, <laughs> and, and ironically, those are the two things that have stayed and everything else has changed. And uh, everything else has taken off. And, and they've got some, some really good players in here finally. And, you know, a great coach. And, uh, you know, the ownership on down has done an amazing job. So you're going to be in New York this year mostly just like watching Knicks and Nets every day play? Yeah, I live, I live in the city, and um, I'm going to be handling a lot of the East Coast stuff for the team, um, you know, some pro scouting and just some college stuff as well. But, you know, it's convenient for me. You know, I've got a young family, and we'll be able to hit a lot of games. So, obviously, with New York, Brooklyn, Philly, Boston, up and down the East Coast. You talked with much of your dad about the role, and it's given, obviously, he has a valuation yeah, he does. I mean, he's been on both sides of it, uh, front office and coaching. And, um, you know, I think he, he's happy I'm getting back in the game. Uh, and, you know, I think if I said I wanted to get into coaching, he'd, he'd be happy. If I wanted to do this, he'd be happy. So, um, you know, now we'll, we'll have a little bit more to talk about. How do you reflect on your tenure as a Warrior player? <laughs> you know, it was uh, – it was an interesting time, personally, and for the, the franchise, um, but, you know, it seemed like everybody came out of it pretty good, and, um, you know, I always loved, I loved living in the Bay Area. Um, I had great teammates, the people in the organization were great, and, um, you know, like I said before, it's just great to see the, the success that this franchise has had, and, uh, you know, it's, it's been a long time since I played here, but I, I look back on it fondly. Sorry if you were already asked. I know you got something. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry if you already asked this, but how exactly did this come together exactly? Yeah, uh, I was just saying, you know, Bob and I go back pretty far. He represented me as a player. We've always stayed in contact. And when I got done playing, he was asking me what I was looking to do. And uh, we had some conversation over the last year and kind of found a, a role that would, that would work for me. And uh, I said it was the appropriate amount of workload for me right now with a young family and stuff. And just, just want to get my feet wet and start doing things. And, here we are. What did you do this last year? I just took some time off. I've got three kids and uh, just did a bunch of stuff that I haven't, haven't ever been able to do um, as far as traveling and coaching Little League and, and doing those things. And it, it was great. And I'm not ready to give all of it up right now, but I definitely wanted to you know, start getting back into the Are you, you going to be based out of the Bay Area? Or where no, I'm going to be based back east. We live back there. And I'll, I'll do a lot of scouting for you know the Eastern Conference and, and, and teams, teams back there. How old are your kids now? Uh, seven, six, and three. Okay. So, <laughs> so do you miss playing? Um, certain parts of it, you know. Um, in general, I do, but when you ask me what I specifically miss, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I, I love it, but I got to a point where, you know, moving around, traveling, you know, your body starts breaking down, and it's just, you don't enjoy it like you used to. What do you remember most about your time playing for the Warriors? Uh, we weren't very good. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it just, uh, <laughs> it's just, it's, it's ironic, you know, just to see how, how, how things have changed here. Um, and, and it's great, but yeah, I mean, we, we weren't very really good, but you know, we had a good time. <laughs> we had fun, had some good teammates, um, just a lot of interesting stories, and uh, for better or for worse, and uh, you know, it, was, it was the beginning of my career. And, Every day you wake up in the NBA is a great day, but like I said, we you know we weren't very good unfortunately, but um, everything everything worked out. Uh, what's it's your it's most interesting story? Um, 
you know, like when you come in the NBA, you know, I, had a, I had a certain perspective of what it was growing up around it, my dad being, being a coach. And so you have these expectations of, of what it's going to be. And, you know, that the first couple of years certainly um, wasn't that year for, for many reasons. Um, and I just never forget when uh, Coach Montgomery took over. I think it was my third year. He was coming from college, and I think he had expectations of what the NBA and all was about. And, uh, you know, first day of practice, we're doing layup drills or whatever. And uh, Eduardo Nahara is, is, is shooting layups off the shot clock. And, you know, and, and Mike Montgomery is just spinning. You just can't believe it, you know. <laughs> this, this, is, this is what I signed up for. This is what the NBA is. And, you know, and I kind of looked, you know, Eddie was a great guy and a fun teammate. And it was just like, you know, it's just, just kind of how things are going right now for, 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 for the team, for the organization. Uh, yeah, you know, it's just kind of like, all right, this is this is it, man. Did, did the tag of being a, you know, your third overall pick, did you feel like that kind of weighed down on you at times so here? I mean, that comes obviously with a lot of... Yeah, a little bit. I mean, looking back on it, you know, probably wasn't, um, probably didn't have the right mindset to be the third pick, you know, I mean, you got to go out and, and, and put up numbers, and, and, and I was probably too team-oriented and was interested in getting the team to be better and playing together with my teammates, and uh, probably, you know, I should have, I should have been more aggressive, should have taken more shots, just launched and, and done all that stuff, and, but, Ultimately, it was about I played 15 years in the NBA. I had a great time, enjoyed it. Couldn't, you know, couldn't be happier. Wish, wish I would have won a ring, but that didn't work out. But hey, you know, it was, it was a fun ride. The difference between Bob Myers, the agent, and now Bob Myers, the agent. <laughs> Not much, man. Pretty humble guy. Pretty humble guy. Um, you know, always Bob. Bob loved coming up here to go to games because he grew up in the Bay Area, so he'd always want to come see my games. And when I was playing as a Warrior, but when he gave me the call to say he's um, he's bailing on me and coming to do this. I was I was happy for him, but I couldn't you know I couldn't believe he wanted to get on that, this side of things. But he's done he's done phenomenal, obviously. Because so someone who was here during the bad old days, you kind of get a, a laugh or get a lot of wet hearing about how the Warriors have ruined the NBA because they're so great. And yeah, I mean, just, who would have believed? You know, um, and it happened so quick too. I think mean, turned so quickly. I mean, you know, when Stephen Clay got drafted, and you know they still had some tough times. And, the thing just turned so quick and you know three and four years uh it's it's who, anybody that's been around i mean you can't believe it you know was there ever a thought the last you know few years of your career or any talks about maybe coming back and being like kind of a bet for any of these teams yeah i mean there was there was some discussion a little bit but um it, it just never worked out timing wise and then uh you know at the end it, it just uh It would have, it would have, that would have been funny, but you know, come back in another capacity, and uh, hopefully, I can provide some value. Was Bob your aging your entire career until you until he left? To go to yeah. Bob? So the first few years, him and Arn Tellen represented me, and then Bob left, uh, and Arn handled me, and then Arn left, and it's just a constant, constant exodus. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how different is the vibe here the past few days than what you were used to? You know, when you were coming up. It's just an overall general positivity and a sense of, you know, uh, accomplishment, right? Like, you know, <laughs> versus, you know, fighting an uphill battle and trying to, you know, get past mediocrity. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate it. Yep. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Mark.